Hello, welcome back to the uh, second reading of the day for the uh, official release launch day of um, A Dark Assortment, a uh, collection of 17 dark tales. And the one I'm going to read now is um, <clears throat> called 15 Days. 15 Days. Steve woke slowly, his muddled thoughts clambering over each other like a pack of barking dogs eager to be heard. He rubbed his eyes with the palms of his hands, sloughing off a crust of dead skin and dried mucus. He blinked and squinted up at the ceiling. Christ, he muttered, where the hell am I? He ran his hands over his body. He was naked, his skin sticky with dried sweat. Wow, he must have got lucky with some girl. He couldn't remember. What the hell was I drinking last night? He asked the empty bedroom. He closed his eyes and remembered the cheers as he drained yet another shot of tequila. He clutched at the bedclothes and pulled himself into a sitting position. A vicious bubble of gas gurgled and forced its way out of his stomach and up his throat. A belch brought the taste of rotting apples to the back of his mouth. He gagged and his guts squirmed as if they were trying to escape from his body. Oh, God, he moaned. He swung his feet onto the floor and stumbled to the door. Where the hell was the bathroom? Across the landing, a door stood ajar. Inside, a light was on and a fan whirred. That must be the bathroom, but was it occupied? He'd have to risk it. He pushed the door open, and that was when he saw her. The girl lay face down on the floor, her arms and legs splayed awkwardly on the cold tiles. Her face was turned to one side, and a puddle of white, gelatinous vomit glistened on the floor below her mouth. Steve stared, his eyes wide in horror. Who the hell is that? A brutal cramp shuddered through his abdomen and the floor swayed beneath his feet. He staggered to the sink and threw up noisily, emptying his stomach over and over again until retching did nothing but burn his throat and make his eyes water. He spat into the sink and turned the cold tap on, washing the worst of it away. He'd clean it up later. Maybe. He splashed cold water on his face and rinsed his mouth out. That's better. He lifted his head, wiping his face with his damp hands. Slowly, he raised his eyes to look in the bathroom mirror. Let's see the damage. But his bleary eyes didn't go to his reflection. There was something else. Steve screamed. The girl stood behind him. Her pale face reflected in the mirror was deathly pale and her eyes glittered with a savage greed. Steve whirled around, almost losing his footing as his bare feet skidded on the smooth floor. The girl bared her teeth in a cruel parody of a smile and long threads of drool dribbled from the corner of her mouth. Steve backed away, fumbling for the door handle. Too late. She leaped forward and grabbed his arms, pressing him back against the wall. Christ, you were strong. Steve opened his mouth to shout for help, but she clamped her lips on his, pushing her cold tongue against his and breathing out hard, forcing her spent air into his mouth. With it came countless millions of microscopic spores. They flooded into his lungs and coated the inside of his mouth. They stuck to his spit and he swallowed them down, down into the moist, warm places of his body. Steve gathered his strength and struggled free from her grip. He planted his hands firmly on her chest and shoved her as hard as he could. She stumbled back, her arms flailing as she lost her balance. Steve ran from the room, slamming the door behind him. He dashed back into the bedroom. Thank God his clothes were on the floor by the bed. He bundled them in his arms and thudded down the stairs. 
He pulled his jeans on, stepped into his shoes and opened the door. As he stepped out into the street, he pulled his T-shirt over his head. Then, still straightening his clothes, he sprinted away faster than he'd ever run in his life. It was a cold morning, and the fresh air and exercise revived him. By the time he was halfway home, his heart rate had slowed to something close to normal, and he'd had time to think. The girl must have been on something, maybe speed. There'd been a bad batch doing the rounds, so his mates had said. Crazy bitch. He shook his head in disbelief and laughed to himself. I can't wait to tell the guys. They'll be in hysterics. It was too good a story to keep to himself until the evening. Maybe he could catch up with his mates right then. There was a place in the high street that did a great cooked breakfast, a perfect cure for a hangover. And come to think of it, he was starving. He changed direction and ran across the road, dodging speeding cars. A couple of drivers sounded their horns and someone hurled abuse at him. But Steve just laughed. He didn't give a damn. He felt great. He felt... alive. He jogged along the high street to the cafe and peered in through the steamed up window. Great. The gang were all in there, huddled over their huge mugs of coffee. A couple of the girls, Debs and Nicky, had tagged along too. Even better. When Steve marched in, the boys raised their heads and greeted him with cheers and jeers. Steve grinned and pulled up a chair. He grabbed Dave's coffee and took a slurp, enjoying the look on his friend's face. He smiled at Debs and gave Nicky a sly wink. Damn, they look good this morning. They both smiled back. He must be on a lucky streak. Oh, man, he said, have I got a story to tell you. Inside Steve's body, the spores swelled as they absorbed his fluids. They began to germinate, releasing a cocktail of chemicals that mimicked his endorphins. As the fungal cells grew and multiplied, their enzymes seeped into Steve's soft tissues, breaking them down, turning them into pulp. The fungus fed on his flesh, sending out its thread-like mycelia to creep slowly through Steve's internal organs and eat into his bones. All the while, Steve lived every day to the absolute max. He'd never felt so alive, so buzzing with sexual confidence. For fifteen days, Steve's life was fantastic. And then, one morning, he woke up on the floor and he didn't know where he was or how he got there. It looked like he'd puked on the carpet. He wiped the sticky threads of white vomit from his mouth and pushed himself up to his feet. As he stood and swayed, the door opened and a frightened face peered into the room. He didn't recognise her, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. Steve smiled. She looked delicious. And that was a short story called 15 Days. So thank you for watching and listening. That's part of this collection called A Dark Assortment, available exclusively on Amazon. Um, and it means Prime members can borrow it for free and uh, Kindle Unlimited users can also read it for free. The audio version of this story which will be even better quality in the video. I'll, I'll make sure it's all cleaned up. That will be on my website at mikeycampling.com and that will be available free to listen to whenever you like as an mp3 download for members of my newsletter which is called The Awkward Squad. So please feel free to go over to mikeycampling.com forward slash giveaway and giveaways all one word. word and you'll see how to uh, grab yourself a bunch of free books and audio files and all sorts of other stuff. And I, I don't send spam and things. I'm not a horrid markety style person, but I just like to give some uh, nice free things back to my readers. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and listening. I'll see if I can record another one now. <laughs>